with you one more time. Look, I'm excited about something that we're kicking off uh, this weekend. We're going to be starting with uh, Born in Captivity, but I am going to be doing what we call chapter readings. Uh, we're not going to do a whole book and once we're going to do chapter readings and I'm going to feature four of my 25 books. Well, it's 24, but 25 is actually uh, in the process of being written. We're going to feature uh, four of the 25. I'm saying 25 because I'm actually may do some readings on some of the excerpts from the 25th book. But the four that we're going to uh, feature initially is Born in Captivity, Academic Apartheid, Critical Mass, and Merging Souls. We're going to start out today. Uh, and I'm not going to read from the beginning to the end. We're not going to do it in a linear manner. I'm, I've picked out a chapter that I think is extremely important. Uh, I'm going to read the first part of it. These chapters are pretty thick, so I'm not going to try to get through the entire chapter because I started with probably the most content-intensive chapter, chapter in the book, but I think it's important. And so we're going to start out probably with the chapter introduction and then one uh, uh, subsection of the uh, chapter and then we'll move into part two uh, tomorrow and Sunday and finish the chapter out and tomorrow I'll also be doing born in captivity uh, not excuse me academic apartheid uh, which is actually book number 24 uh, if you haven't gotten academic apartheid you need to get it uh, you can follow along with some of these readings we're going to be doing over the next month or so and uh, today is born in captivity day and we're going to start with chapter number five. Chapter number five is the disintegration of the black family nucleus. And we are, what I'm going to do here is initially uh, today we're going to do it on a recorded session because it's the end of the day and I'm trying to get some things done. But I want to make this interactive. So starting tomorrow, all of these sessions will actually be done on a live stream where people can comment and add their um, um insight and ask questions as well and I'll sort of give a summary after reading to kind of tell you where I was in my head and why I felt that was important and then you can come in and you can still do that on this one I just won't be able to respond immediately but you can sit up and weigh in on that I want to hear what you have to say um, but all of my books are the result of intensive research done over years uh, you will find at the back of my books a long list of references, uh, citations, and bibliographies that contributed to the book, and many of them will be studies I, I uh, conducted myself, but also you will find the uh, corresponding research that girds that up, and uh, I invite you to go on a, uh, an excursion into the bibliography to get an idea of just what it takes to put something like this together. But here we go. We're going to start with chapter five, the disintegration of the black family nucleus. It says this chapter is the most intensive and comprehensive in this book for a good reason. The disintegration of the black family has laid the path of stagnancy and mediocrity for the black collective. And while a substantial effort has been invested in promoting the idea of the black family, um, it uh, excuse me, that promoting the idea that the black family has always been in shambles, the truth is that the black family was working towards strengthening itself before the 1960s. The combination of the desire to be accepted by the white power structure and the exogenous interference by the same power structure interrupted and ultimately suppressed these efforts by the black family. Anyone who has followed me for any significant amount of time knows I understand and appreciate the fact that the state of black America is the result of a complex dynamic that has created the perfect storm to completely destroy and consume blacks if there are not some extensive changes made in the near future. There are some experts who predict that as soon as 2038, blacks will be insignificant, be a, become an insign, insignificant people. And by 2050, the black race as it currently exists in America will be virtually extinct. We are being systematically annihilated. And uh, the term annihilation there isn't always focused on uh, loss of life. It's on catastrophic events that impact our community, uh, socio socioeconomic impotency, uh, miseducation, uh, the lack of 
financial fluidity or economic fluidity. So we are being annihilated in a number of different ways that even though we may be still breathing, we will not have a place. While the dynamic in question is extremely complex, the nature including uh, multiforest machinations implemented by white supremacy distorted norms and standards that lead to fa uh, uh, fallacious cultural paradigms for blacks, economic impotency within the black collective, and more, the dynamic can be viewed in the same manner as a complex mathematical equation. In fact, this is the only way to gain a lucid understanding capable of providing the insight necessary to engage these problems at the level that they produce effective results. When dealing with a complex mathematical equation, the goal is to break down the problem using certain rules of simplification. When dealing with the enigmatic issues that are currently plaguing blacks in America, it is important to identify the most pernicious issues and work down from there. There is no denying that the lack of economic mobility is an immense problem, and the miseducation of black youth in is also a substantial issue that deserves a certain amount of attention. The struggles with consumerism and individualism also play an integral role in the progressive demise of the black collective. However, it is my opinion that the disintegration of the black family nucleus is the single most destructive element that, is di that directly impacts the quest for progression in the black community. As in fact, the assault on the black family will prove to be a checkmate on the grand chessboard if black men and black women do not rediscover the intimacy of their mutual spiritual interconnectivity. The survival of the black race is dependent upon it. Unfortunately, it is one of the least addressed issues by black leaders. It, ra it is rarely mentioned at rallies. Our politicians are never called to task for their role in the demise of the black family, and there are hardly any programs that are designed to address the prodigious, this prodigious problem. There are several unique dynamics at play when it comes to the progressive destruction of the black family. According to a study conducted in 2005 by Dr. Lorraine Blackman, a child born in slavery was more likely to grow up living with both parents than they are today. Man, think about that. A child born in slavery. And, and, and I frame it, I context, I, 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 add con, I contextualize it, I frame it to, to, to make it, to, to give it the impact it needs to, to truly understand what that means. So this should be quite alarming, especially to those who are cognizant of American history, understanding that during slavery, black men were often traded off and sold out of their homes, uh, if you want to call it their homes, and children were sold out from underneath their parents. While there are some who postulate that there has not actually been a breakdown of the black family because slavery had already destroyed the black family and it never recovered, the truth is that as late as 1960, more than 75% of black children were born into a home in which parents were married and lived together. So this phenomenon that has led to the breakdown of the black family is relatively new. Okay, we're going to move into the first sub- uh, subtopic of this particular chapter and that's where we'll end it and then we'll pick up from there on tomorrow. It says, understanding why the black family is important to survival of the black collective. In 1965, Daniel Patrick Monaghan wrote a report entitled The Negro Family, The Case for National Action. While some of the ideas presented in this report bordered on naive and fell far short of historic holistically illuminating the black dilemma, it was highly instrumental in providing insight into the problems that blacks face as a race and the influence that America had on our condition. While it was the postulation of Monaghan that blacks had finally gained its recognition as American citizens, primarily due to the ending of school segregation and the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, he ultimately admits that the situation for the black family and subsequently for the black collective was getting worse instead of getting better. Monaghan carefully outlined his idea that the basis for the decline of the black, con uh, of the black condition was the rapid sy systemic erosion of the black family structure. In his report, which has become known as the Monaghan Report, he conceded that the evidence necessary to support a comprehensive evaluation of the enigmatic issues plaguing blacks was incomplete, but it was, per, uh, it was persuasive enough to make a very powerful argument that it was necessary to aggressively address the disintegration of the black family nucleus if blacks were to escape poverty. 
One theme that consistently plays out in his report is that the national government was highly active engaging in what it viewed as the black dilemma, but very little progress, if any, was was being made. Basically, Lyndon B. Johnson's administration was making a lot of noise, but ineffectiveness was virtually none, but effectiveness was virtually non-existent, which is the hallmark of the white liberalist ideolo ide uh, ideology. I have been adamant that blacks not waste our time attempting to convince whites of the genuineness of our struggle or explain to them the role that they have played in it. They are either, they are either completely cognizant of the reality that blacks face and their culpability in it, or they are so immersed in the illusion that is incessantly presented which portray blacks as inferior and hopeless. So while they may have some sympathy for blacks, they have uh, they have no true desire to take action to ease a struggle that they simply cannot relate to. During the middle part of the last century, the problem is that whites were not able to see the deeper issue that blacks were facing because of all of the noise that blacks were making about discrimination and poverty. The truth is that it is easier for whites and others to see acts of discrimination against blacks. However, it it is immensely more difficult to quantify the damage caused by nearly 400 years of oppression, including 246 years of chattel slavery, 12 years of reconstruction, 20 years of black codes and convict leasing, nearly 60 years of Jim Crow laws, and a constant dose of gentrification and mass incarceration. It is the breakdown of the black family that functioned as the conduit through which many of the most insidious and malignant machinations of white supremacy, racism, were interpolated into the natural order and function of black culture. Because the traditional black family began to disintegrate, black children have been growing up in homes without the proper balance of masculine and feminine energy, subsequently resulting in black youth who lack the totality of comprehensive development, psychology, so, psychologically, socially, emotionally, and spiritually. This has led to what I call scar tissue of the soul. The lack of the presence of one parent, predominantly the father, leads to psychological and emotional trauma that has the potential to negatively impact a child's ability to learn, adjust, engage, and compete in the world that is inherently hostile towards them. It seems that this impacts young black males more than females. However, young black girls are far from being impervious to the nefarious forces at play. They simply deal with it differently. We know now, uh, as I have pointed out many times, that there there's this uh, force within uh, childhood, regardless of race, but definitely something that we have to look at in the black community called ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And not does not only do, do these adverse childhood experiences, which include uh, separation and divorce of parents, uh, parents being addicted uh, uh, to illicit drugs and alcohol, uh, verbal abuse, mental abuse, mental and emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, neglect, and, 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 and several others. There are ten primary, and there are some that can be expanded. But these ACEs also have a long-term or even some consider a lifelong impact on health outcomes. Uh, children who have at least four ACEs, each, experience, each adverse uh, childhood experience counts as, an, as one ACE point. So if your parents break up, that's an ACE. If you have a, a parent who is abusive, that's an ACE. If you witness abuse, that's an ACE. So all the things that can happen, you can have ACEs. When you get to three and four ACEs, three and four points on the ACE scale, uh, a child with four ACEs is 12 times more likely to attempt suicide than a child with zero. Uh, a child with three to four ACEs is six to seven times more likely to develop diabetes, to develop ischemic heart disease, to develop uh, a number of other health issues that have chronic and lifelong uh, implications. And it goes on and on. This doesn't even uh, consider the social, uh, the social uh uh, inhibitance in developing socially uh, and how that impacts social function as adults. So it goes on and on and on. So it's so important that we understand the gravity of having uh, whole families and what it does and why it means. And we'll get all into this over the course of this chapter, which, like I said, we won't get through today, but we will uh, hopefully by Sunday. What should have been 
A source of strength for the black collective has become a source of weakness for the black community. Additionally, a family environment in where the concepts of black group economics, filial responsibility, and community leadership are introduced and developed. This is why the family is so important. If, if, if you don't get anything else out of this, this is why the family is important. This is where you inculcate the value systems that take your kids into uh, a position of power as adults. This is where you train them. This is, you don't wait until someone becomes 20 years old to start talking about group, group economics. You don't uh, wait till they become 20 years old to start talking about filial and parental, uh, whether paternal or maternal uh uh, parenting is, it, is that that responsibility of uh, being a parent, um, maternal or paternal. You you don't do that at 20. You inculcate those values into children as they are coming up, starting as early two, three, four, five, six years old. By the time they're seven, uh, much of which, uh, much of that which will guide them has already at least been initially. Um, introduced into their thinking and their thought processes and then it's about developing it guarding it protecting it well when there is not a balance in the house when there is so much lacking in the home uh by way of energy leadership protection um guidance and so much more that's obviously going to be a deficiency okay the home is where a child begins to develop their self-perception or self-image, and the parents serve as the primary label givers. It is the reflecting of young black youth on the reflected appraisals of their parents that set the foundation of how they will see themselves. The inferiority complexes and poor self-images that plague our community are the results of monumental failures in the home. Because one parent is attempting to carry the load, they are rarely home, meaning that an entire load of educated uh, youth have followed, educating black youth has fallen on the shoulders of public education system that is neither equipped nor designed to educate black youth to compete with their non-black counterparts. Blacks have lost sight of the fact that education is more than the attainment of academic skills. Education must be viewed as a holistic process that is initiated at the point in which the child reaches self-awareness. Education includes the entire process of experiences and the gathering of knowledge that equips a person to effectively engage the obstacles and challenges of life. The family nucleus is where the process is initiated. Also. The family serves as the ideal environment to introduce many of the concepts that represent a complete paradigmatic shift in how blacks view the world around them. The disintegration of the black family is also one of the reasons that the young black male population has fallen victim to the aggression of the private prison industrial complex. And furthermore, these young men are being uh, primed using the public education system as it supports the con uh, controversies that directly serve the school to prison pipeline. It is important to understand the relevance of the black family. The restoration of the black family nucleus is key to the elevation of the black race as a whole. The black family is the smallest institution through which the principles that are key to the empowerment of elevation of the black race are communicated and practiced. I want to thank you guys for listening to that. I think we did it good. We did it under 20 minutes, and we got through that. And um, like I said, it's, a, it's, an, it's an extensive chapter. Uh, but it's pointing to something I think we have to give a great deal of uh, consideration to because I think there's a lot going on um, that can be dealt with and managed if we can get the family uh, situated. Uh, it's real hard to do this without that because the development of self-image, the development of self-awareness, self-concept has so much to do with what you believe you're capable of, what you're ready to go out and face. These inferiority complexes come from somewhere. This level of self-hatred uh, comes from somewhere. We have to deal with those things before we can ever take on the things that are outside. And so I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about that. Also, if you haven't ordered your book and you want to get this and go through it and read it in its totality and get the full brunt, and share it, maybe, you know, even get amongst others and read it, or, you know, get it where you can read along with what we're doing, because we're going to get through the whole book eventually. But if you want to, the link is going to be in the description box. Go ahead, order your copy, and it will be signed and shipped out to you um, ASAP.
on that note, I'm out of here. Also, don't forget to uh, support the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable Hello, day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Stopping. Rick Wallace here dropping in. I will not be before you long, but what I do need to reinforce and reiterate with uh, great uh, specificity is the fact that if we ever needed your support here at the Odyssey Project, we need it now. Uh, there are so many different battles going on on so many different fronts, but one of the things that I'm immensely pa passionate about and can uh, never successfully overlook or sidestep around is the failure uh, of protecting and covering our children, preparing our children, educating our children, giving our children a fighting chance in this world. There are constant headlines of our children dying. Uh, at the hands of those who are supposed to protect them, at the hands of law enforcement, or becoming incarcerated uh, because of a failure to be prepared, and so many other things that we are going to have to be responsible for. We can no longer be uh, satisfied with sitting idly by and going, oh my God, shaking my head, that's sad, that's a shame. We're going to have to become actively involved in being a part of the change, being a part of empowering our youth. So at this moment, I am calling out and I'm asking you uh, to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. You will always be able to find a way to do so by looking in the description box at the top of the description box of any video on the Black Voice channel and any other platform where you see videos concerning black issues. You will see how you can support us by either clicking a link or giving directly through the organization's Cash App account. Again, this is a time in which we really need to step forward. So again, I'm asking, step forth and show some love and show some support.